Welcome to the Spirit of Life channel please subscribe, like, comment and share. Thank you so much the message begin right now befriending the ego at the core of your being is a vast identity or presence that supports your underlying perceptions. Its nature is simply to be, residing within your heart as a birthing place for all of your creations. This presence is experienced throughout all of life as being the void itself from which all of life springs forth. In our story of how spirit fell in love with itself, this presence became known as your female nature. It is this very nature, that at this time on your earth, is returning to you. It does not arrive with a predetermined agenda to make itself known to your reality, it has no agenda. Its arrival is solely based on your willingness to receive the clarity and grace of her magnificence. The core of our book is all about learning to receive this female counterpart, joy with your male nature, the mind, and to integrate that reunion into your day-to-day -day reality. Being in receivership is a way of life. It will challenge your notion of what is truly important, stirring up unresolved issues, while awakening dormant, intuitive abilities within your body. It will release chemicals within your glands that were designed to respond to her presence. This presence will not only change how you perceive yourself, it will help resolve your inner conflicts. She is here to meet her beloved, reuniting with her galactic counterpart to experience the blissful reunion of spirit within form. Many of you already feel her energy while meditating, acting as a facilitator during your energy work or when you allow joy to be your reality. Many others are but waiting for her presence to descend. But, she will not force herself upon any of you. Each of you will experience spirit united within your body through your soul's willingness to allow this female nature into your life. It is your soul that chooses with each breath, each moment the very experience of your life. It is not a time for your soul to be complacent, passively allowing your past to dictate your future. It is a time for your soul to act as a wise mediator between all of your identities. Together, let's explore this inner relationship one that will allow you to truly taste the fruits of her presence, your female nature. Who am I? It is a question that torments the mind of humanity. Gazing into a mirror, you want to believe that this is your soul looking back. A balanced soul, one that has embodied and allowed all aspects of itself to represent its nature will reflect a dynamic, ecstatic presence that is undeniable. Some of you have seen this aspect of your soul and have discovered that your soul nature looks and feels very different from your conditioned, human nature. For the most part, the identity that you assume as being you is but a byproduct of your upbringing, your past experiences. It was created with a divine purpose, to act as a witness to your soul's journey, to record and document, like a photographer, your experiences. You have within you a living library filled with accounts of your past, for you to access at any time. This photographer is here to serve you, not control you. It has been called many names, including your personality or ego. Discovering a solution to your galactic dilemma required some creative thinking. Reincarnating into physical reality over and over gave your soul numerous opportunities to embrace its own resistance to loving its reflection. It gave you the time and space to set up potentials, prior to each incarnation, that would provide a stage for your own self-discovery. A love for the multiple reflections of yourself that would transcend duality. On our side of the veil, you sat with us, your non-physical family sharing ideas and reflecting on other lifetimes. With each lifetime, you chose your parents, the culture and gender that would best serve your intention. In your early childhood years, your soul would enter this world still feeling a strong connection with your angelic family. Over time, the pain of feeling undermined, misunderstood, ridiculed and disrespected disturbed this connection. Your soul, unable to communicate clearly on its own behalf as a human child, discovered how to avoid these conflicts, you simply left your body. You experienced in your relationships with your parents, siblings, teachers and friends the most painful of encounters, love being withheld. For the most part, you felt this energetically, and like most adult humans, you learned the virtue of shielding yourself. Many of you survived very abusive physical and emotional upbringings. You adapted to your environment simply to survive. Your soul, 
during your childhood, would spend much of its time with us. For as a child, your relationship with your non-physical family was still intact. Eventually we would became known as your imagination. During those times when you literally left your body, another part of you assumed responsibility for your life. It was not qualified to take on this burden, but over time it would learn to represent you as best it could. This part is your grand photographer, your ego slash personality. It became your identity based on the documentation of all the pictures of your past experiences it took in your life, creating a grand photo album that it uses as a reference. It has befriended another part of you that also enjoys detailing and defining your life in it, as well, feels disconnected from the presence of spirit. It is your mind, the divine male nature. You soul spent much of your early years on earth keeping one foot in physical reality and one foot with us. When life on earth became too challenging you would leave the difficult parts to your personality to handle. Having only your past to refer to, it learned to serve you by making the best choice it could to avoid situations that resembled past associations. This went on for some time, until the soul decided it was safe to be physically present and to stop avoiding the challenges you faced. As we perceive the sea of consciousness that is humanity, this relationship between your soul and personality is very polarized. It is a relationship that must be healed in order to experience the ecstatic presence of your female nature. Your history would suggest that the healing takes the form of purging you of this photographer. As an adult, you perceive this one as being the root of the problem that must be eliminated. The ego, however, continues to serve you by protecting you from any experience that might trigger the pain of love being withheld. Every time you feel inspired to act on your heart's behalf, you also feel the resistance, distrust, and doubts of your ego wanting to protect you. Many of your therapies are attempting to address these fears without offering to establish a new, healthy relationship between the ego and soul. The ego continues to shield your heart by projecting thought packages into your interpersonal and global interactions. This leads us to ask, if the denial of this relationship was your ticket to freedom beloved soul, don't you think the train would have arrived by now? It is not our intention to belittle you. But your grand photographer has solid evidence that this world is not a safe place to live in. It believes your ticket to feeling safe resides in your mind, shutting yourself off from your heart and not feeling the pain of this reality. This is very challenging for each of you for you have discovered that the yearning in your heart can never be satisfied by the mind alone. No matter how many new and exciting concepts you intellectually discover, the heart continues to wait to experience self-fulfillment. Many of you are aware of these conflicting feelings within you. You also believe that they exist outside of you. If you could see this terrified little photographer trying its best to represent your soul nature, true compassion would swell in your heart. Yes, it is serving you and it has become angry and resentful. It gets blamed for everything you lack and never receives any recognition for the job that it does do very well. A dramatic shift is waiting in each of you that will ask the soul to get in the driver's seat of your life. Are you ready to assume full residence and responsibility for your physical experience, starting with the relationship many of you have yet to offer to your photographer? Are you, soul, ready to sign a lifetime lease agreement with your body? While you were playing with us, your personality assumed responsibility for your own survival. It is not qualified nor did it agree to this relationship. But every time you jumped ship and came over to our side, someone had to keep the ship afloat. Now that you are back, you are embarrassed that this photographer has been representing you to the world. Are you ready to become a full-time resident here on planet Earth? Being such creative thinkers, could you not use this very relationship between the ego and soul as an opportunity to discover the solution to our galactic dilemma? Is it within your soul to love that which you judge to be unlovable? Would this not heal the very core of a polarized reality? Don't take our word for it. Put it to the test. Start to embrace this little photographer and see if with a little practice you are not able to act on your heart's desires without all the resistance. This intimate relationship with this aspect of your soul nature will greatly accelerate your ascension experience. Many of you are just beginning to recognize that you cannot bring this experience to you intellectually. 
It is a dream that becomes a new reality when the experience becomes tangible in every cell of your body. This new relationship will ask of you to place your attention on how you are feeling, and to acknowledge the concerns and doubts by not taking it personally. You, soul, must teach this photographer that this is indeed a safe world to live in. Your ego will only believe this to be true at face value. So, you have some teaching to do, by giving it as many tangible experiences as you dare that are filled with a passion and joy for life. Your ego must photograph these experiences and over time will begin to relax and trust that life is safe. Now this can be quite enjoyable. Your task in life is to offer new and fulfilling experiences to your grand photographer each and every day. To heal the reliance on the old photo album that is filled with painful or unfulfilling pictures. We, the family of Michael, serve this new intention by igniting the inertia within you that has kept you complacent. We will say it again this polarized relationship will not change unless you offer tangible evidence to your ego and mind that your heart can be trusted. It is not a time for your soul to be passive. Allowing the heart of creation into your life does not deny you the pleasures of living. Quite the contrary, it invites you to taste a passion for life that will transform your identity. Many of you yearn for this. It is very much our desire for you to know how this reunion can be realized in your day-to-day -day reality. When you allow the energy of spirit to come to you, in this human experience, then you can have the multidimensional experiences of yourself here, in physical reality. What is that going to do to all of you? How will that change your identity? How are you going to coexist in this collective dream with humanity, this dream that has you feeling diminished and separate from love? How are you going to do this beloveds? We encourage you do this by creating joy in your life. All of you are very familiar with the drama and trauma that is a byproduct of feeling disconnected from the presence of spirit. How would it feel if we truly trusted in our own heart and allowed our physical bodies to experience the joy and ecstasy of life itself? Can you imagine the pleasure of feeling the support from the love that is within all of life? What happens when the presence or collective consciousness of the kingdom does come to us? It stirs and awakens within you your own divinity. How does your divinity represent itself as a human being? Not very well if you try to contain it within duality, or if you are asking your photographer to represent your magnificence for you. You already know how unfulfilling that experience can be. It is time to taste something new. Some of you believe that you must perfect yourself before you are qualified to receive such a consciousness. That you must be enlightened before the energy of spirit will enter your life. You know we very much enjoy playing with our partner, Robert, he is living proof that enlightenment is not a prerequisite. Many of you have spent years preparing yourself for this ascended state of consciousness. And much of that is to be honored. However it is the very service to the joy itself that will accelerate the integration of your female nature into your day-to-day -day reality, allowing the ego to sit where it is comfortable, in the back seat. We invite each of you to walk out of this old dream that is based in agitation, self-doubt and anxiety. To walk into a new life, you must give it a birthing place within your heart, mind and body. This life will ask of you to be in the moment and to rely on the support that you experience when you embody your female nature. Learning to receive all the love that you deserve will invite you to redefine your identity. It will invite you to stay connected to the bliss that supports you by being present. Being in this now moment will challenge the mind. For your current identity is based almost solely on the patterns of thoughts that keep reinforcing your past history. It will challenge you, and yet with a little practice, the presence of spirit will reveal itself as being joy. You have within you the most powerful tool for expressing yourself in this moment. Your breath. Every breath is another opportunity to give your mind something to hang on to. Conscious breathing is a powerful way of life. What would your life be like if your devotion shifted to being in this moment? As you feel the air enter your nostrils, there is a presence as well that is waiting to enter every pore in your skin. When you are present, not projecting your thoughts into the future or regurgitating your past, you open yourself to the now. In that place within you exists the sweet nectar of love. You can learn to feel this presence simply by quieting the mind for 15 to 30 minutes, consciously breathing with each breath. 
with a little practice, you will begin to feel the presence of your angelic self. You can pray for it, hoping that it is real, but without putting this into practice, you keep that experience separated from your physical reality. How will you relate to your friends, family and neighbors with your eyes blazing with the presence of spirit? How will you go grocery shopping? Do you fear society will perceive you as being deluded, out of touch with the real world? Will they think you are a drug addict when you beaming with the presence of joy? Spirit comes to you when you learn to receive her presence. How will humanity understand this? They will not at first, and how will you respond? Will you serve them, teach them with compassion? You can teach them that all of life is about making a choice. You can choose to feel as you want to feel. How do we choose that? It starts here and now. What feeling would you choose at this moment? Can you imagine it and simply breathe that feeling into your body? What feelings are you willing to make the standard for your reality? What value do you place on yourself? You now set the standard of your own reality. You can transform any state of consciousness within yourself. Can it be your joy to acknowledge your fears and transform them back into love? Each of you have this ability, and it is our joy to remind you of that. At this moment, there is a love that supports all of life. It is available to you right now. Can you allow it into your life and freely share it with those aspects that feel separate from love? Through this there is a profound healing waiting for each of you. Your photographer will not trust this love at first. It can be your joy to witness the power of love as the fears of your ego begin to dissolve simply by offering love to them. This is not a sugar-coated love, it is profound, unwavering, and direct. This is a grand moment. It is just the beginning. It was only 18 years ago that we read the energy of this planet, and you in turn did something magnificent. You created a grand celebration called your harmonic convergence. Slowly the soul began to descend back into the body. You saw this as an opportunity to reunite globally even though you were ridiculed for being out of touch with reality. You celebrated the opportunity even if it was just a hope that there is something more real than this dream of separation. You started to give life to a new dream from your heart. The integration of this new dream, a new vision, started to grow roots during the next three or four years. We could see then that you had created a new potential for humanity. There was not going to be the end times in terms of your species being terminated. You had discovered a key to your galactic dilemma and now it was time to bring it into reality. You changed the very fabric of your own future. Once you got a taste of spirit coming to you, you wanted to accelerate your ascension process. What once took a lifetime to digest, you attempted to do on a monthly or yearly basis. This is not by our doing. We are only supporting your intentions. It is your choice. You wanted to speed it up. In the speeding up there is a bit of exhaustion on the physical part that is questioning, how do I integrate all these changes? Your mind is saying, it is not my problem, deal with it. And your heart is answering, indeed, why don't we relax and enjoy ourselves? How can I serve you both? The body shares, that when you are in joy, everything flows much easier. The ego shares, that when its fears are validated and embraced, it does not seek to control your life. Your mind shares, that when it feels the presence of its female counterpart in the body, it does not feel responsible for the life of the soul. When you finally relax into allowing your female nature to be your observer, you tap into your multidimensional nature. The female nature is unlimited, and your mind is finite in its perception of reality. Within the multidimensional possibilities you discover your spiritual family. You move from the old dream where you believe you are a singular being having a singular headache from your human experience, into being a multidimensional representative of a galactic family. What's humanity going to do with this? What is humanity going to do with this? You will have to teach them how it is that you transcended from this singular state of consciousness, an identity feeling separate from the kingdom, to an identity that is God consciousness. This was your natural state of being when you resided within the kingdom, an identity that could not be contained. Within that love every gland and cell of your body is coded to awaken. 
it begins to secrete the hormones that will bring your body back online, opening the seven seals, balancing the chakras, igniting the crystalline structures and dancing within the beauty of life itself. What ignites the body biochemically are ecstatic, joyful experiences. We know you resist this, all of you. And yet, this is your key. On a physical level, the cells are waiting for this new diet. A diet that will replace the cells that for too long have settled for what we call misery soup. That diet of misery soup is your past history, and from a physical standpoint, your body will go through its own resistance. The patterns of behavior that have developed from consuming endless bowls of misery soup support an entire community of cells. The Solution Conscious choices of activities and experiences that are supported by your own joy, repeated as often as you like. This supports a diet that is based on the pleasures of life. You choose the ingredients, that is called free will. These new joy cells that come in will awaken your biology to the original blueprint of your physical body. Such a blueprint resonates to Christ consciousness, the merging of your male and female natures. It will ignite a detoxing process. We know how much you love this stage, within the body to accommodate these newly awakened cells. What fights such a good battle to protect you from knowing this truth? It is the nature of duality itself with the personality being its witness. This beloved personality has photographed your human story and holds that as your truth. It knows your identity to be your past history and it has a rather large photo album to make its case. Some of your spiritual teachings insist that this ego personality is the source of your resistance, and to achieve enlightenment you must get rid of or overthrow that little puppy. You must annihilate it for there is no freedom and no enlightenment unless you release this one. How are we doing with that beloveds? Within Christ consciousness is there truly a desire to get rid of anything? This ego personality, for most of you, will be the most humbling experience that any of you will ever have. It brings the greatest shame to you, and that is an old dream beloveds. That is a very old dream. You come now wearing the new energies that allow you to be as you choose to be. Can you discern for yourself who you are representing in this moment? Are you the soul of a grander self or is it that little puppy again? Your personality is very loyal to you soul. When you get clear about owning your God self and making that relationship tangible, it will serve your new allegiance. How do you discern if indeed it is your personality? This photographer is known to you by having an agenda to protect you. It is very quick to defend that agenda. Its agenda is to protect you from a world that is not safe. It has all your past experiences recorded in a photo album as living proof that to survive the shields must be up at all times. And based on your past history, your personality is right. Until you give it a new experience that demonstrates that life will support your heart's desires, it will continue to act as your protector. It needs to see tangible proof, and so we are encouraging you to give it physical evidence that joy is real. Allow yourself to receive the energetic nutrients from life all around you so you may experience love being shared. This is a love without boundaries, borders, or shields. As you practice feeling how life truly loves you, Turn to this photographer and share what you are learning to receive for yourself. Your personality seeks to be recognized for the job it is doing. Its security is very fragile until you have developed within yourself a conscious, loving relationship with life. Until you turn within and have this new relationship, it will project its insecurities into other people to get a response simply for the recognition. Many of you have found yourselves embarrassed by the level of control this one has in your life. As children, you sincerely appreciated its role as protector. As an adult, would this not be a good time to change that relationship? Indeed. On your spiritual path, many of you became conscious of this personality and perceived it to be the source of the interference. Those teachings that suggested to get rid of this undesirable part of yourself started to look pretty appealing. And yet, as much as you resisted loving this photographer, you also began to open yourself up to feel the presence of Christ consciousness. You faced the undeniable truth of this consciousness, that all is one. How do you apply this principle to this very annoying servant? You begin by not withholding love from this servant. 
you stop disowning its place in your life. You acknowledge that for most of your life, it represented your identity to the rest of the world. This personality would say to all of you I know that while I was in the driver's seat, we found ourselves in the ditch wallowing in self-pity but you are still alive, are you not? Where is the gratitude for my willingness to at least attempt to steer your life while you were away playing with the angels? It is also the one now saying to all of you, I do not want to be responsible any longer for assuming the role of your magnificence, for I cannot do that for you. I feel utterly unqualified and it is embarrassing to us both when you put me in that position. We must have a new relationship, a relationship that is based on you allowing yourself to feel the magnificence of who you are and sharing that with me, your photographer. In this new relationship I would ask of you to heal the past by acknowledging the emotional scars that exist in our heart. Then I can relax and do what I do very well in the back seat of your life, take pictures. I am devoted to you soul, until you initiate joyful experiences that support your magnificence, then I, your personality have nothing tangible to validate that this joy business is real. That it is not just a bunch of fairy tales. You must give me tangible experiences to photograph that are supported by joy for me to lower the shields. Beloveds, it is time give this personality a new photo album that is based on multiple opportunities you create for yourself that allows life to share its love with you. Love yourself so deeply that you are willing to receive that love. Imagine a new photo album that is solely based on self-love. That sounds like a new dream, a new paradigm, a new consciousness and a real solution to a polarized history. Your job, is to discover such a love for your own reflection that you recognize that reflection as being God slash Goddess looking back at you as itself. Can you sense why we are so involved with celebrating what you are doing with your life at this time in history? Multiple reflections of God's love for itself? You have no idea of the gratitude all of creation has for each of you. What lies ahead for you as you become the presence of spirit incarnate? What is your most responsible agenda as a human being? Is it to play and to enjoy yourself? Does this feel responsible? Put your imagination to work beloveds if you think you are playing now. Give your personality tangible evidence that this is real and sincere. Every single day, schedule the most delightful, joyful, ecstatic experience that you can imagine having for yourself. Then, do it, even to the objection of those in your life that are still enjoying the misery soup. Do it to the objection within you that is saying this is not real, how can I enjoy my life when the world is in such pain? By giving yourself permission to make it that real. This is the new dream, making it so real that you can taste it. Can you wake up from your diminished dream of life and recognize that love is alive in everything? What would you become if you would devote one hour a day to joyfully existing? Just one hour a day. We would say you would become a human angel. Not quite ready to be God slash goddess yet? One hour a day doesn't quite cut it, but the human angel will most definitely separate you from the misery soup diet. It is time beloveds. It is the time to make it this real. At this time on earth, there is but 2% of humanity that is saying I will do anything, anything to reclaim my angelic heritage. Everything else is just an old dream. Everything else is feeling as if it is an illusion. And this time I do not want to spend my entire life in a cave meditating on this. I do not want to isolate myself in a monastery. I do not want to separate myself from the rest of my family playing the shaman. You are seeing how many of your friends, family members and co-workers are really struggling with maintaining a false sense of self-love. Are you willing to be of service to this new love that would serve to ease their pain? We believe you are. You do not need to twist the arms of ignorance to make your new vision tangible. Those who are ready for Christ consciousness will come to you. The misery soup diet that is based on guilt and shame will become indigestible to many. What is your homework? What is this new spiritual teaching that is so demanding of you? Enjoy your life each moment, every hour, and if you are not, then you are choosing to remain unconscious of your birthright. Your new allegiance to a life that honors joy, self-love, and self-fulfillment will look very, very vain to those eyes that understand love from a place of sacrifice and denial. 
you were the ones that had the courage to face the feelings that all of creation has disowned, to create a solution to our galactic story, our old dream. In the hundreds and thousands of lifetimes you have experienced as a human being, your journey has culminated in this one life. It is all very new. Now what do we do with it? We cultivate it. We cultivate it every day by being conscious of how we are feeling. Self-love supports this new foundation with life and asks of you to take responsibility for maintaining this connection with love. That connection begins with opening your life, your body to feeling the energy from life supporting you. Filling every cell in your body with this love. As you learn to receive this love for yourself, what you will share is the overflow, radiating from your eyes, your entire body. Your magnificence will shatter the mirrors that you look into each morning, breaking the illusions of who you are with the radiance of love that is connected to all of life. It is for each of you to discover this. We will share our presence with all of you in any way that you will allow this relationship to blossom. And when you allow it to blossom, you will understand that we are not the exalted ones. We did not raise our hands when it was time to volunteer to come to Earth. To volunteer to adapt to the very parameters of a fear-based reality so as to demonstrate to your human family the very solution they have been searching for. It is a grand, grand dance with life you have been playing. How much joy are you willing to have in your life? How many tangible experiences will you give this personality so that it will learn to trust that it does not need to be filtering energy? It does not need to be here protecting you from having fulfilling, passionate relationships with other people. It does not need to endure occupations that are boring. It does not serve you by putting up endless shields that protect you from a belief that life is not safe. It is a wondrous time to be on earth. If you are willing to place a value on your life that honors self-love, you will experience in your physical reality what your heart has yearned to taste for eons of time. Befriending your ego allows for the physical integration of your divinity. Are you ready to receive the love that exists in life all around you at this moment? If that is a yes, we suggest you buckle your seat belts for the love wash of your life. Archangel Michael